Not exactly what you'd expect to see occurring in your store, is it? Well, the truth is that unfortunately many of these occurrences do happen. The trick is not to let them happen to you. This segment on loss prevention is a very important part of your orientation. To keep your store operating successfully, your store's product and asset losses must be kept to an absolute minimum. And that means getting familiar with loss prevention. Losses in your store can occur in a number of ways. Through the mishandling of merchandise, through poor housekeeping, through paperwork errors, through shoplifting, through vendor theft or internal theft, even through unclean or unsafe conditions inside and outside your store. All of these occurrences contribute to what is known as shrink. That is the value of merchandise that is lost during the process of moving that merchandise from the back door through the front. This tape is going to highlight a number of fundamental loss prevention practices that are very important to all of us. The importance of reducing our store's shrink cannot be overstated. Shrink adds to the cost of doing business, which can result in increased prices for our customers. It's a problem that can also steal our store's profits as well as our jobs. Your efforts with regard to loss prevention fit right in with our team concept. And that's because everyone, from their first day on the job, can make a valuable contribution to fight shrink. So welcome aboard our loss prevention team. And just remember, to think to prevent shrink. Before we go any further, let's take a look to see exactly what shrink is and exactly how it can impact the success of your store. Shrink is defined as the difference in the value of merchandise received through the back door as compared to the value actually obtained from that merchandise when it leaves through the front door. To explain this a bit more clearly, let's take a look at how shrink happens. Here are some typical examples. A case of grape jam falls during transport and three jars break. Since each jar sells for $1.59, your store's loss is $4.77. A vendor's delivery of potato chips is three cases short. The store's receiver didn't check the delivery and missed the shortage. Each case sells for $19.08. The loss from this incident is $57.24. A grocery clerk carelessly cuts a case of cereal. Two boxes of Rice Krispies are cut and cannot be sold. Since each box sells for $2.09, the loss here is $4.18. The produce clerk stocks a case of peppers on top of the existing display without rotating the product. Eight pounds of peppers at 99 cents a pound become spoiled. The loss here in produce $7.92. A deli clerk mistakenly discards an end cut of bologna. Two pounds at $3.20 a pound means a loss of $6.40. A cashier forgets to check the bottom of a carriage and fails to ring a 25-pound bag of dog food. The loss here is $9.99. A clerk sees a shoplifter concealed two steaks and fails to report the incident to management. The loss here, $18. An employee takes a few items almost every day after having his lunch. This has gone unnoticed for a week until the employee is caught by his manager. The total of the items unpaid for and lost, $7.50. In just these few examples, the merchandise lost added up to a total loss of $120. Now you'll remember from our orientation segment that the profit on the merchandise we sell is less than a penny on the dollar, less than 1%. That means that the extra sales needed to make up for this loss comes to over $16,000. And even if that enormous amount of extra sales were to occur, your store's profit would still be zero. And that's a problem for everyone. Right from your first day on the job, a little bit of common sense and pride in what you do will be a tremendous help to your store's loss prevention efforts. No matter what position and area you're working in, there's a lot you can do throughout your store to help control shrink. Let's take a quick tour.
First stop is grocery, our biggest department. Here a couple of helpful tips and a little bit of common sense will go a long way towards minimizing potential losses. First, keep an eye out for any merchandise that is in danger of becoming damaged. In addition to reducing shrink, this can also prevent loss due to potential employee or customer accidents. Remember, keeping your store neat will help to keep it safe. When using a case cutter, be sure to open all cases carefully. Besides preventing injury to yourself, handling this tool correctly will help to prevent damage to the merchandise inside. To prevent potential loss or misuse by customers, don't leave price guns, vendor price stickers, paid stickers, or any other material used to label or price merchandise unattended. Pricing is something that we want to be able to control. Another tip is to avoid placing price stickers on removable lids or plastic covers. This will help to prevent customers from placing lower price lids on more expensive items. If you see any stray items, especially perishables, that a customer may have left in the aisle, return it to the appropriate department immediately, especially items that require refrigeration. Here too, simply being alert to situations that could cause product to be damaged will help in reducing shrink. Make sure product is stacked neatly on the shelf to avoid falling and being damaged. And keep an eye out for any leaking packages that could also damage surrounding merchandise. In general, try to keep the dairy case clean and odor free. Check to see that all cooler doors remain closed so that perishable products will stay fresh. Product that requires refrigeration or that must be kept frozen should not be allowed to warm or thaw while stocking. All dairy and frozen products should be rotated. That means that items with the earliest expiration date should be placed at the front of the case to ensure they are sold first. Also, be alert to return any misplaced refrigerated items to their proper spot in the display case. And be sure to observe your store's load stacking limits to prevent spoilage. Always take special care when handling eggs. One broken egg in a carton will keep a customer from buying the whole dozen. And one broken egg on the floor could cause an accident, possibly costing your store thousands of dollars. Alert the manager in charge should you think that any refrigeration or freezer unit is operating improperly. Being alert can help to prevent a significant loss of merchandise. Okay. Let's take a peek in the back room. There's plenty of opportunity to prevent shrink back here. First of all, when you're working the back room, good housekeeping is essential. Keeping this area neat and orderly will ensure that merchandise does not get mixed up or damaged and will provide for a safer place in which to work. Keeping the receiving area orderly will also reduce the opportunity for loss as vendors deliver shipments. Control all salespeople and vendors in the back room areas. Limit their access to your store's designated vendor staging area, the marked area of the receiving floor. Remember, it's your area. Protect it. Make sure all receiving doors are locked and alarmed when unattended. If you should see any strangers in the back room area, ask them for identification and notify your manager immediately. Carefully count all incoming shipments and make sure you receive what you sign for. Each carton should be opened and checked for proper contents and checked off item by item. And never accept personal gifts or samples from a vendor. You don't want to give the appearance to your manager or your team members that you are engaging in any improper practice. Handle all merchandise carefully. Just because it's in a large shipping carton doesn't mean it can't be damaged by improper or careless handling. If merchandise should become damaged, alert your supervisor to the problem immediately. Also, never throw away any product, no matter how damaged it might look, without first checking with your manager. And report to your manager if you should find any saleable or credit merchandise in the trash container. And try to be conscientious when you use supplies. When a supply item is taken from a shelf and not recorded as being used, it is unaccounted for and shows up as shrink. Use only the specific supplies provided.
Shrink can take a big bite out of profits in all of these departments. All of the merchandise sold in these departments is perishable, and that means extra care must be taken when handling or displaying these types of foods. Make sure to practice good housekeeping and product handling practices in these areas. Product on the floor can be a safety hazard and can result in even greater losses. Of course, all of the food sold in these departments is susceptible to contamination by bacteria. So cleanliness and proper sanitation is extremely important, as is proper rotation. And as in the dairy and frozen food areas, if you suspect that any refrigeration unit isn't working properly, alert your manager. When slicing and weighing a customer's order, do so carefully and accurately. This will ensure that the customer gets what they pay for and your store receives the proper payment for the merchandise sold. In the deli department, salads should be turned frequently to keep them fresh and saleable. In the seafood department, products should be kept moist and displayed according to proper procedures. In general, the products sold in these departments require extra care to ensure their freshness and saleability and to minimize the shrink associated with product loss. In the produce department, shrink can be minimized simply by handling all items carefully. If product looks damaged or bruised, customers will simply put it aside and it will go unsold, creating a loss for your store. Also, you'll need to rotate these items as you would with any perishable product. Remember, if you wouldn't buy it yourself, you can't expect a customer to want it. This is especially true when it comes to salad bars. If your store has one, make sure it's always kept clean and looking appetizing. Good housekeeping in this department will also minimize loss by preventing unnecessary customer or employee accidents. Last, but most certainly not least, is the front end. To make sure this area is running smoothly, your front end manager will periodically perform a spot check at your register. These checks help to check on your accuracy as well as the accuracy of our systems. If you're working here in the front end, you're going to be handling merchandise and money. Both should be handled properly. First, let's talk about handling and ringing merchandise. While many of our stores have automatic scanning devices at the checkout, losses still do occur. Here are some helpful hints to help reduce shrink at the front end. Make sure to scan or ring all items. Nothing contributes more to shrink than allowing an item to leave the store unpaid for. Keeping this in mind, be sure to check the bottom of all carts for items a customer may have placed there. And be sure to remove all circulars to check for any merchandise beneath. Always be sure to ring each item under the correct department and at the correct price. If you're not sure about produce identification, ask your front end manager. If an item doesn't scan and isn't marked, don't guess at the price. Ask for a price check. When bagging your customer's order, do so with care. Broken or damaged items will most likely be returned by an unhappy customer, causing a loss for your store in more ways than one. Proper bagging is really just an extension of good customer service. Okay, let's talk about handling money. First and foremost, handle all cash, checks, coupons, and other forms of payment carefully and properly. You're going to be responsible for the contents of your cash drawer, so always make it a practice to lock your drawer if you should leave your register area for any reason. Only accept checks that meet your store's requirements. If you're unsure about a check from a customer, simply ask your front-end manager. Always take the time to count your customer's change properly. This will ensure that you'll end your shift with the correct amount of money in your drawer. And remember, it's company policy that you must never check out a friend or relative. Your trainer will go into each of these areas in greater detail. In the meantime, however, your alertness to certain situations and a little bit of common sense can help your store and your team a great deal more than you might imagine. Let's take a look at a couple of other areas that contribute to your store's shrink.
Steve. There's a guy in aisle six who's changing the price label on a package of meat. Why don't you point him out to me? Remember, if you see or suspect a customer of shoplifting, do not take action yourself. Try to keep the person in view until you can tell your manager what you observed. Your manager will take it from there. The best way you can help prevent shoplifting is to provide exceptionally good customer service. If you see a customer that you have your doubts about, ask if you can be of assistance. The best defense is to let the customer know that you are aware of their presence. Hello, ma'am. Hi. May I help you with something? Uh, no. Just, uh, looking, thanks. Okay. You have a nice day. If you are attentive to the customer, they will probably think twice about trying to steal from your store. And if, like most of our customers, they have honest intentions, well, they'll be just as pleased with your efforts to assist them. Either way, you and your store come out the winner. Hey, Chris. These are great. What do you think? I'll grab a bag and we'll have them with lunch. Clearly, this type of situation is unacceptable. As we covered earlier, any type of product loss affects your store negatively. Ask your manager to explain the proper procedure for purchasing items to eat or drink while at your store. The key point to remember is, don't become involved in anything that is less than honest. If you're aware of someone, anyone, doing something that is less than honest, do them a favor and tell them to stop. Taking this simple step will let them know that you are uncomfortable and that they are at risk. After all, their reputation and future, and possibly yours, are at stake. We understand that many people don't like to get involved in these types of situations. The trouble is, once you know about it, you are involved. We clearly understand some people's reluctance to confront a co-worker in these matters. Your trainer will explain how you should report any activity that you feel is detrimental to your store and your team. <music> Protecting the store itself is also an important element in thinking to prevent shrink. In your community, your store is an important asset. That's why we ask that you treat it with respect. Follow company policies, including smoking only in designated areas. Stay alert and keep an eye out for any potential problems. If you should see any situation that you think needs attention, report it to your manager at once. We are committed to providing a clean and safe environment for our customers to shop in and for you to work in. As with any aspect of your job, don't hesitate to ask your manager or other members of the management team to assist you with any loss prevention effort. And remember, no matter where you work or how good you are at what you do, we know that mistakes can and do happen. The biggest mistake you can make, though, is hiding or not correcting it. This is especially true if you price something incorrectly or even damage some merchandise inadvertently. Let your manager know they will be happy to help you correct the mistake. As you've seen during this presentation, there are many ways you can help to enhance your team's loss prevention efforts in reducing shrink. Take pride in your store and in your own role as a member of our loss prevention team. We need you out there. So always remember to think to prevent shrink.